you probably remember our visit to the turbine hall and something that Carl mentioned as a mere side note back then. We're looking at TG5 and 6 belonging to the third uh, reactor here and behind them a wall separating TG7 uh, and 8, the, those belonging to the damage unit from these others. So as a matter of fact, that wall you just saw is just a tiny fraction of the entire supporting structure for the new safe confinement. And the question is, where did all the stuff go that used to be where these supporting structures are right now? Here we are on the other side of the new safe confinement. As you can see to the right in the far distance is the Chernobyl nuclear power plant. And to the left, the big structure is the new safe confinement, not yet in its final position. But it seems like Carl has something interesting to talk about here, so let's take a closer look. Yeah, so this is gamma ray shine coming over the wall. We look down here, almost nothing. We're up here, at chest height, it's quite hot, and we can tell which direction it's coming from if we use our body as a meat shield. Well, it says 0.7, uh, 70,000 counts from it right here. So now I'm going to rotate towards Lucas, and uh, I can't read it that well from where I am, but I'm down quite sure five. it's gone down. We'll keep down rotating to four. around. Down to three. Down to three. 30,000 counts per minute. Well, there's a whole lot of scrap metal and concrete pieces and everything just over there. And I can see some radiation warning signs as well. These. Uh, Red and orange, a little triangles. Some people walking around inspecting stuff. Huh, what's going on there? Now I gotta put my hands in my pocket because they're fucking cold! <laughs> <laughs> Very well, it's time to get warmed up anyway. New safe confinement, about 20 microsievert power, energy compensated with the other mass. But if we go where Carl Willis is digging, you can see a lot of pieces that apparently came from the reactors and were not possible to decontaminate. Got us a uh, Geiger tube. You can see the windows closed on the probe, so we're measuring gamma radiation only, times 10 scale. If we look at the uh, if we look at the uh, exposure rate here, we're measuring close to eight to nine millirentgens per hour right here. And it's all due to this, some, you know, perhaps this equipment, perhaps nuclear fuel materials that are in the vicinity, on the ground, but uh, fairly high levels of, of radiation in the cereal. Let's go take a closer look. 60 millirentgens per hour right here. Good times. Let's see if we can do any better. That's the first time on this trip that my watch is actually going off, <laughs> which is set to energy compensated 50 microsievert power. <laughs> well, it's 500 here. <laughs> 500? Yeah, look. Microsievert power, it's just 100 standing here. Yeah. <laughs> Go here. This, this one is also energy compensated. How do you like this? This is fantastic. <laughs> Introducing Jake, MIT nuclear engineering student. Oh wow, this is actually reading overload. It, oh, you, I never looked at it. Standing right here. Oh, yeah, uh, those, are, those are blown away. Yeah. <laughs> well, no, the energy, this one, uh, this one is extremely high range. So, okay. so 0.02 uh, so it's centigrade. 20, 20 yeah. millirentgen per hour right here. Yes. And just for the hell of it, because I always use this device before, I'm just gonna get the Gamma Scout, that little toy, so to say, and see what that says. If we bring it very close to a hot area. So it's just this chunk over here. Ah, so I, have just reflect, I have a reflection on it. Okay. <laughs> well, it was, I, I'm just gonna do it first person again. Yeah. But you can see it's almost one really see it. I'm just wondering, we should probably take one of these uh, small pieces and measure it somewhere else because I'm wondering if it's that molten mass on it. Uh -huh. I, don't, I don't think it's the slag. I think there's a piece of fuel down because there. Because it's also this that's, that's kind of hotter than anything else. Yeah. This is this is the cooker right here. I'm going to take a still photo 
and then I'm gonna dig it. Okay. See, I told you it's not just me. Every nuclear engineer in the world eventually ends up digging around in nuclear waste like it's sandbox and he's a little kid. It's perfectly normal. Come on. Carl Willis digging around in some reactor pieces apparently. Getting very high dose rates as you can see. Energy compensated now up to 3 microsieverts per hour. And I think Carl is digging around to find something even hotter. Yeah, getting close to a millisievert. Yeah, we're actually probably gonna reach a millisievert. Come on, come on, yay, one milli! <laughs> Hold it there. <laughs> Hold it there. That is quite something. I am still wondering if that might be a piece of the turbine, though I'm not too familiar with what the bits and pieces actually look like, to be honest. Anyway, back to call. Oh, that was easy to exceed one milli. Now yeah, it's about two. near two, yeah. You see where it's hottest? Here. Yeah, yeah it's hotter on the back. Carl, you're getting a lot of rats on the nads. Yeah, not really. Well, <laughs> it just rhymes, you know. <laughs> and whatever rhymes is cool. Yeah, rocks. The dad dude is like a nuclear engineer and she's digging in the dirt to dig up some yeah, nuclear I mean, fuel. Nuclear engineering shit. isn't necessarily a complicated thing. This is, this is a, uh, you can do digging in nuclear engineering. In this case, we're, uh, we're hunting hot stuff, so, you know, there's going to be some digging involved. It's all about the, the thrill of the hunt. I dig your style. But after digging around there for like half an hour, we were told that like, uh, guys, you know, could you stop playing around in a giant sandbox and just get into your hazmat suits and actually get your job done? So uh, we had to move out. <laughs>